You know it's super fly when Day Bar is open. Hip hop review news plus breaking new artists, pop culture, current events with an urban view of it. This is all things hip hop delivered raw, unpolitically correct. The fans' perspective, putting all artists in check. Dope content, current hot sh by remarkable men. Our thoughts clearly. Welcome to Audio Theory. Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe and everyone do us a favor and please hit the like button. What's good? How you been, man? What is good, brother? I am good, man. I had the most relaxing week of my life after three weeks of complete fucking exhaustion. I did nothing. It was phenomenal. I canceled plans with people. I was like, dude, I'm taking absolute control of my life. I'm like, bro, I would love to hang out with you, but... It's not happening. So uh, nice. it's, been a, it's been a good relaxing week. How about you? Dope. Uh, it's been pretty relaxing overall. Um, so I'm going on vacation starting tomorrow. So it's been kind of hectic trying to get all my shit out the way before then. Um, so I where started is, packing. Just the people know where you're going. Yeah. So my girl and I and her sister actually are going to uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh, shit. Um, nice. We kind of made it like a a yearly tradition starting a couple years back um so we had gone just for fun once and then kind of like fell in love with it so we try to do it every year and tickets were pretty cheap um the, like the, a five hour flight from you yeah like five hours from from cali not so not bad um i know every time i speak to my friends like who are who are from the east coast who live there like hawaii is like when i say that i'm going to hawaii it makes it sound like seem like I'm going to fucking China or something. Yeah, you might as well go to India. Yeah. So Hawaii's like a huge deal if you're that far away. But for uh, Cali people, Hawaii's like really uh, pretty it's like common. East Coast guys going to Cali. Like it's yeah, like, yeah. It can be Basically done, that. but it's not like the easiest thing. I got you. Yeah. Um, so excited for that. It's it's kind of hectic because we had to get a test um, ahead of time because if you don't do it, you have to do a, a mandatory. 14 day quarantine so i was freaking out because my results didn't come in and my girl's results came in uh within like 12 hours on saturday so i had anxiety all night i'm like yo i'm gonna be so pissed if because i don't know if i can get a refund or like any of that but don't they let you do the thing where you can still get on the plane but you just have to upload your results the moment you get them no it's some super strict shit where like if you don't have the results uh before you get on the plane, I believe, then you just asked out. Like, there's nothing. Okay, because yeah, Puerto Rico let us like get there. Uh, oh, I mean, we, I already had my results before, but yeah, Puerto Rico had that like 72 hours within like, like departing, you must have a negative result. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they were like, as long as you have your result at some point during your trip and it's negative, then you're fine and just come and go. Your place. Yeah, but I was also worried that my test would come back invalid because the chick when we were doing the nose swab she's like make sure you do it properly because if you do it incorrectly you're gonna have to pay like 150 bucks for an expedited test and there was no option so i was i was freaking out and then i found out my fucking gmail account is like was like a hundred i kid you not 150 percent over capacity somehow really yeah so i just straight up wasn't getting emails for the past like 48 hours Oh, so you had the results, you just didn't fucking check. Well, I, the email came, but I just never got it because okay, my okay. Gmail was over capacity. But my genius girl was like, just she just tried the link that she had and put in my information, and then I found my negative results through that. So Beautiful. I was like, fuck, thank God, because I, I needed this this vacation before the year's over. Nice, dude. That's awesome. So how long is the uh, trip for? Uh, it's about six or seven days. Oh shit, nice. So are you gonna freelance from there as well or you're not even taking your shit? Yeah, I'm gonna freelance, but it'll only be like an hour per day or something. Okay. And what about Sarah? Does she have is she completely off? I believe she's technically working. So okay. we'll both have like an hour or two throughout the trip that we have to work. But the time difference is so far off from uh LA. I think it's three hours behind. So Okay. Basically she has to get up at six AM. To, to work yeah i mean which isn't terrible though because you think about it you'll be done by like around three o'clock four and then you have like the rest of the day to fucking chill so yeah. not ideal but um i mean dude whatever you need to do to fucking get out of that hellhole that is your house with the the road of eagles <laughs> yeah, for real like, i just need to escape 
end 2020 on a high note. Nice, nice. So you go there this week, but then obviously Christmas, New Year's, you're bringing it in. Your birthday, you're bringing it in in LA. Yeah, I mean, this was like kind of a birthday trip. Um, and for those who, who are watching, you don't know my birthdays falls right in between Christmas and New Year's, so half the time my man got no gifts growing up. <laughs> people forget. I get 1.5 gifts if I'm lucky. I might get like, yeah. like I'll get a real gift and then like a chocolate bar or some shit just yeah. to like make it seem a little extra special. Um, but the funny thing is, my parents actually for like the first eight years of my life um, to get me in school early, they they lied and made my birthday December 2nd. So okay. until I was like eight years old, I literally thought my birthday was a whole different day. <laughs> I felt so deceived. I'm like, are you even my real once parents? Once you turned nine years old, you were like, damn, so where all the gifts go? Like, yeah. all this stuff. Yep. And I was like, now I, I wonder why. Or now I know why you told me, because my gifts are getting more expensive. So they're trying to screw me you. over. I got you. I got you. Nice. That's going to be a good trip, though. To you, uh, I'm assuming you and your uh, future sister-in-law have good rapport. Like, it'll be yeah. good vibes. Yeah, we're chill. Um, so it'll be a, a good trip. Nice, dude. That's exciting. Um, I actually did, did, did you mentioned family stuff. So, um, I, the one thing I did this past weekend, bro, that's how funny and how small the world is. Um, dude, one of my mom's best friends in India for like the past two or three years happened to leave India. Like her and her husband work for the American embassy and they just so happened to get posted in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So like, dude, she's literally like down the road from me, from my apartment right now. Oh, so wow. we went for dinner on, uh, on Saturday night, uh, do for like three hours eating, drinking, and just like sharing like a bunch of stories. So that was really cool, bro. Like hearing things, uh, like from my mom, like point of view, but like her, the way she would speak to a friend and stuff. Yeah. So that was like really cool to like get those, uh, get those stories and memories. So, um, yeah, dude, such a fucking small world. Like out of all the places in the world, you fucking moved to Deerfield Beach, Fort Lauderdale. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, that was super dope. So that was the only activity I did outside the house this weekend, which was uh, well worth it. So dope. definitely uh, shout out to the universe for making that happen. Nice. I love those are like the best moments when the universe just randomly does shit like that. Kind of like, like us, the Austin, like us in trip. Austin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, see, that's the, those moments like that where I'm like, I need Instagram because if I wasn't on Instagram, I probably would have never. But either of us would right, probably. Right. You didn't us. post that you were on a flight somewhere. I'm like, yo, where are you going? And he yeah. was like, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that's where Instagram serves this moment. It's the moments where people are just flexing for no reason. It's like, yo, this is toxic. <laughs> Off this shit. Um, yeah, Speaking of, by the way, I found out my barber uh, is going to be in Hawaii at the same time. So he's doing like, he hooked up with some charity uh, group. And I guess they fly him out to cut hair for like uh, that's dope. kids in underprivileged areas and shit. And yeah, he posted his um, his ticket. And I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna be there like literally a day after you. So, same island though, or is he gonna be? Yeah, same else? island, like literally same city oh. and everything. Oh, wow, that's dope. That's super dope. Nice, man. So, if you wanted a fresh cut, you could just wait until you landed and like yeah. <laughs> keep it, I know. keep it nice and the like, whole time. I should have told fucking, you know, a week <laughs> earlier and I would have saved it. Uh, that's all I got. That came out nice. Um, all right, man, let's get into it. That's what we've been up to. Um, let's figure out about some uh, stuff that's going on. Did I feel like. The funny reason why I wanted to focus on this to start off the episode is because not only you are sending it to me, like I have other people who just know I'm Dominican send me the same shit like back to back. So if you guys don't follow Tyga, you're fucking up in life, first of all. Uh, but Tyga just started, I guess, his own like modeling agency. It's, we, we so it's that? very vague. Like I went to the website, not because I was going to apply. I mean, I low key might apply for a job if he has openings, but um, it just said like, entertainment and media company like not even modeling dude from what i read or what i can like decipher i really think what it is he's like he's like getting a cut of what the girls make on the only fan page. yeah i'm pretty sure that's what and it like is. and like he's getting them so much publicity by having him like them on his stuff so like their numbers go up immediately he gets a cut and it's like a you know a circle where everyone kind of gets paid yeah and he kind of like basically finesses it in a way where it looks like he's just i mean he is a boss but like some dude who's just chilling with random girls yeah, it helps, it helps behind the problem. scenes yeah 
I mean, he's he's behind the scenes. He's probably scripting it like, yo, you're gonna twerk by the pool for ten minutes, and then yep. we're gonna post this. You're gonna post it here. I'm gonna be in the bed and all this extra stuff, and their revenue is probably skyrocketing as a result. Hundred percent, like, bro, it's like a, it's actually a brilliant business plan to, to think. like every. I don't think there's a loser in this. You know what I mean? Like, like I mean, I'm sure these girls are willingly doing this. Like, I mean, they're probably coming from you know poverty or whatever, and like, yo, I can just like get a couple butt, like you know, injections and make my lips pop up and now i'm fucking getting millions of dollars a year like and dude, getting flown out to the dr for free dude i'm pretty sure most of those girls are from dr though well at least the main ones he's been posting like uh-huh. i like, i follow their page and i think they're all like actually dominican i know a couple of them are see the funny thing is like i always when i come across their pages since they look a lot of them look exotic and foreign i assume they're gonna sound like they're don't speak more than five words of English, and but then like they have like English? the most Valley Girl accent. They're like, "Oh my God!" So I did this and that and that, and this really? whole time I have like <laughs> this super sexy like Brazilian accent in my head that just never it fucks shows it up. up. It's like oh, delete subscription. I don't want this fucking <laughs> basic bitch. <laughs> yeah, one of them. I, yeah, I brought that up because one of them. I don't know which what their name is, but I went to her page. I had followed her for a minute just casually, and then I heard her speaking. And I'm like, can't do it. Sorry. Ruined it. Ruined yeah. it. Um, but yeah, bro, like, just kudos to him. I feel like he's the only one who, like, broke the Kardashian curse. Because I feel like anyone who ever leaves one of those girls, like, their life is, like, ruined. And, like, my man is, like, good. You know what I mean? Like, no drop yeah. off. His fucking rap career was fucking rejuvenated two years ago. And then all you see him is just happy. Like, just happy. Well. So, yeah, Tiger's the GOAT. So, um, yeah, episode 55 is definitely going to be entitled too raw because my man is just fucking killing it on every level um not the only one the dr i think freddie gibbs is out there this weekend too um dude i didn't even know he was fucking dominican like wait he is dude like yeah dude like his grandmother's dominican or his oh, aunt's shit. dominican like oh, that's wow. what dude, that's what i love the dr bro there's so yeah. many shades of us like yo the extremes are crazy i need to go because every all like a, a lot of my friends are either mexican or El Salvadorian or what have you and they always uh tell me I could pass for Dominican so I need to go out there and like oh, yeah. put this to the test and see I if don't people really start think there's Spanish anything that you like any, unless you're legit like just Asian looking yeah. you know what I mean I don't think there's any race of human that cannot pass as Dominican bro. Mm-hmm. like we're just like all over the spectrum yeah. um yeah Freddie Gibbs was out there having a fucking great time um snitching on himself because smoking hookah is definitely illegal in dr oh, right now bro yeah yeah isn't it tobacco though so why no it's illegal because they think it's uh it's helping the spread of covid they're saying so oh. it's fucking up their lungs is making lungs more susceptible to That's the bad. virus um yeah because i when i went in october for my birthday they were like you can do whatever you want here you can't do hookah um and i think joe budden was out there as well this past weekend bro yes apparently dr is popping right now bro like the moment they lift those fucking um, travel restrictions, I think everyone just went out there into fucking Mexico. It's like, bro, we're gonna fuck COVID, bro. Like, we can't do this shit anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go out there, bro. I'll, I'll make sure it's on the uh, 2021 agenda. Yeah. We'll film an episode by the pool audio theory episode 75. Just fucking decked out. We'll yeah. hire one of these only fan girls. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see we do like an hour and a half episode. Like, you just like be in the area of like where we're yeah. fucking. Going. Just walking in the background or something. Just walk in the background, bro. Like, yeah. don't even twerk. Just like oh, we you gotta know, have her introduce me to the week or something. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. in Spanish. El fuego de semana. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, cool. So right, let's get to a couple other things. Um, I think just it's crazy, bro. So obviously, good reason why you're leaving. I know they're saying that LA is about to be super fucking locked down. So what's the latest from what you're hearing being in the fucking trenches out there? Yeah, today's so today marks the first day of like lockdown where straight up pretty much nothing's open except essential businesses. Um, Which is what? Uh, uh, like uh, like takeout, groceries. I don't even know. To be honest, I don't even know if takeout is allowed because there's a, a pizza joint down the street that I like to go to. And my girl said they're closed and they don't even have uh, they're like those little mom and pop shots that are only takeout like you would find in New York mm. and they're closed. So I think it's literally grocery stores and like hospitals damn like it's before it was like outdoor dining or like you know 
nail salons and stuff would have like a setup where there's spacing and stuff like all that shit is out the window now and like there's absolutely nothing open for the next like month damn bro that's crazy they were saying talking about like bro i think the mayor was wilding though from a, a news article i saw either on cnn or fox where it was like uh if we catch more than 10 people in your house we're shutting off the water supply to your house something like fucking they've been wilding. Saying that that? Shit. since the start of quarantine i think they threatened that but i don't know how they're gonna like figure that out unless you're straight up blasting Man, that, but that is some third world country dictatorship bro yeah. like what the fuck I feel like it's all empty threats. I don't think any of this shit is really going to take place. I mean, they, they said you can't, if I read it correctly, they said you can't even be traveling on foot or on vehicle unless like you're going to like pick up essential items or some shit. But how are they going to ever verify that? How are they going to verify that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, bro. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, New Florida's still open, so I haven't really been affected by this at all. Uh, I'm going to New York in two weeks for uh, Christmas and New Year, so I'm sure New York is going to be pretty shut down. I feel bad, dude. My uh, my boys, so I think I mentioned before, at Samba Street, Brooklyn, um, they have a cool bar there. They had it shut down until next year because it's pretty much like, bro, we're, we're not even making any money. Let's just fucking close up shop, and then we'll try again and come like the New Year. So, yeah, I don't expect much to be open in New York, but... I mean, I hope I can at least you know, go out and get some food and, you know, visit people and shit. But um, the reason why I brought that up, dude, is, dude like, I keep seeing these fucking stats, bro. Like, dude, this death rate is fucking climbing aggressively. And, dude, like, it's like, it's literally like a September 11th, World War II, Vietnam overall death rate on a daily basis for, like, weeks on in now. Like, dude, how do you think, like, history is going to look at this fucking time, like... Dude, we're like just losing a large portion of the world yeah because of shit all, every fucking day like yeah that's wild to me is i mean it's definitely gonna go down in history but i feel like it's one i mean it literally infected or affected and infected pretty much the entire world and two i think it's more so like at least in my mind like less about the death rate and more about like how it, like literally every single human being like in every industry uh had to turn their life around because of all the new rules and having to work from home and not being able to travel like there's like no industry that's immune from this it seems like unless you're like a doctor and like you have to be on the front lines like i feel like yeah dude but even that as someone who's in that uh field like if you're a specific doctor bro because if you're a fucking plastic surgeon Dude, a lot of states cancel those kind of surgeries. Oh, so like, you're like, dude, what? Yeah, like, so like, you're like, dude, like, I'm fucked. Or like, you have to go and be a frontline doctor, which is really not what you signed up to be, right? When you initially went that route, so. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely unfortunate with with the death rate. I'm still curious to see because I don't think they indicate um, the the prior conditions, right? So like, if someone had stage four cancer and they died. Uh, yeah. as a result of it they still count it as covid but do they have like i'm curious if they have any data that's like all right these are the covid deaths that weren't um exacerbated by pre-existing conditions and these are the ones where like the person was kind of already on their last Death breath bad. yeah yeah but covid just you know uh, expedited it yeah, again, dude, like, we don't we don't know. Like, I, I don't think we're ever going to know. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully when time, like, that will be deciphered when, like, things just stop being this drastic. But, yeah, and it, and it just, like, obviously, again, I, I'm sure the general population, like, I'm sure the numbers will end up not being so bad. But, like, dude, when they're saying, like, literally the amount of soldiers killed in Vietnam is being doubled every day in America, it's like, Jesus. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? As far as a marketing yeah. campaign, that is fucking terrifying, so. Yeah, regardless, it's super tragic. Um, I'm not feeling too optimistic in terms of, like, anything going back to normal next year, but maybe we'll be surprised. I mean, even with the vaccine, which seems to be a right around the corner, based on what I've seen on Lupe's live and just people in general on the internet, like, not a single soul has, has mentioned they want to take it. Yeah, dude, but why do, you, why do you think that is, bro? You think it's a more like, we just don't trust for no reason or just that people are just too afraid of the unknown? I think people just don't trust anything because it's, I mean, we didn't handle 
the response very well so it's like how the fuck are we gonna trust them to handle creating a vaccine this quickly there's some people on the more extreme side who want to talk about microchips and all the extra stuff that i don't believe in but for me my personal concern is uh I don't want to be a guinea pig. Like with the other vaccines, I, I forget the ones that pretty much everyone gets as a kid. Like we've been doing that forever. So, and yeah. Like we've been doing that for so long. It's like, I would do that for my kids, but this is just like all, like this entire year is an experiment. So I think people are just afraid of being the first to anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I agree, bro. And I, I know I, I think we mentioned last week or the couple weeks before that. I really just think that as long as God willing, I'm healthy. Like I'm just gonna keep getting tested if I have to go do something that I want to do. You know what I mean? I hope that's still an option. Cause maybe, dude, when I saw those pictures of those fucking, uh, essentially those like passport to prove yeah. you got the vaccine, I was like, yo, this is some Holocaust Schindler's list shit, bro. Like, what is <laughs> happening? Um, so yeah, bro. If I gotta walk around with uh, proof of getting the the test every fucking week, I'd rather do that than again until I feel satisfied about like the test, the vaccine working. Because I, again, I don't think it'll never work, but I don't know, bro. The idea that, again, it just, it's it's like, how did this just like happen, bro? Like you're telling me COVID-19 is an absolutely brand new thing. How do you already have this ready to go? AIDS has been around for 20 years or however many fucking years. Cancer has been around forever. Like why is that still a thing then? You know what I mean? The flu is still a thing common cold still a thing so why the fuck is you know because this one affects everyone we're like more concerned about it now um that probably is the case but i don't know it just seems kind of convenient that they were able to come up with this shit so quickly right um but then again it's also like the uh, there's also two sides of this right like maybe people are saying like you know eight months or nine months took too long to, for them to have this so like like it's like a no-win situation but um i i do think bro like it really depends on what happens in Europe, mainly like England, which obviously is a massive ally of America. Because, dude, if, if they roll this shit out and everyone's getting a fucking COVID vaccine and they don't have a fucking fourth eye popping out or some shit, I feel like we'll be like, well, if the Brits are doing it, then we'll do it. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm going to definitely give it some time before I hop on that. But if it comes to it, to a point where, like, I straight up can't travel, can't do 50% of the stuff that I would normally want to do, like go to a restaurant and dine in and stuff, then I may consider it, assuming no one's drop dead. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Hopefully it works, man, because that's going to be a fucking, uh, a bitch of a, not even a next year, a fucking life to fucking have to deal with this shit every fucking, mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So death, death rates. Um, what else you want to get into, bro? Um. Oh yeah, the. Uh, what's the Obama backlash that you've been hearing Dude, about? So like Obama's making the rounds. Um, on, like everyone, bro. He's even been on this week on Jesus and Mero on Showtime. He's gonna be with them. I'm like, bro. You I know Obama's. That. Yeah, that was fire, bro. But this is fucking crazy. They came there. They were like us, like four years ago, bro. No one on Twitter, and now they have fucking a, t a show on Showtime. So, talking about fucking making your dreams happen. But yeah, dude, he was doing the rounds, and I think it was on Breakfast Club. He made a comment of, uh, like, he gets the idea behind defund the police, but, like, he doesn't like that, like, that movement is just trying to get, like, a, a cat phrase out there without, like, the substance behind it. So, like, but the clip that people are running with is, like, I don't like the phrase defund the police. And like everyone is losing their mind. Like, how fucking dare you? We supported you. Oh, so the you. left is. Uh, uh, oh, the left is fucking killing him right now, okay. bro. And I wonder the left how the right feels him. then. But like the, especially like the the black liberals and black uh, Democrats, are like, dude, mm -hmm. what the fuck? We had your back. We made you blah blah blah. And he's like, bro, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying the phrasing isn't the yeah. best because it just triggers a lot of emotions. There's also black cops, so like. No, there could be another way to fucking phrase it like because i really think if you like if you listen to the interview he's never saying the idea is bad he's just saying the phrasing is bad because it just triggers a lot of emotions that may make people take it the other way and just lead to other problems when he could be wrong it's just crazy how like we expect everyone we love to be perfect 
Like, yeah. He could just be wrong. You know, and like that's gonna be fine, and we can just move on with our life and just say, yeah, well, I agree with you. And you like Sean King, just fucking ripping him every post. Like we fucking supported you. I was out there fucking, you know, getting people to vote for you. I'm like, bro, well, that, this doesn't change that. Like, yeah. why are you so mad? So that's just like the funny thing to me. That's my biggest issue with with the media in general is someone, especially someone who's that popular and expected to kind of be a savior for the people to voice an opinion and for them to take it out of context and not understand where he's coming from just seems, shows me that people aren't really listening to anyone really. They're just listening to what they want to hear and who they want to hear it from. And they're expecting, uh, there's already kind of a narrative of, oh, what did Obama do for black people out there? So I think when he says shit like this, then they're like, oh, that's proof that he, he really deep down, you know, supporting racist cops and shit like that. When, when in reality, he might have valid reasons for why defunding the police is a dangerous, uh, hashtag or whatever. yeah. Yeah. Same with the Black Lives Matter. Like, I don't. Now I constantly think to myself randomly, I'm like, what if if the catchphrase was like stop killer cops or something? I wonder like if half the shit that took place and like animosity and stuff would have existed. Like would the far right still have the same animosity towards it? Like what is there even a counter to stop killer cops? Like would it be praise good cops? Like I, I always think about these things and I wonder if like People are so hellbent over what the the movement sounds like, or what it, yeah. how cool it it uh, comes across, or if they give a shit about anything beyond just the the hashtag and like how catchy it yeah. is. Yeah, dude, and that, that's a good point. Like to uh, what you said about the a lot of black people really try to use that against Obama. You know, what did you do for us? You know, kind of thing. So when you really have that like idea of like whatever this person says, you already want to pick out the one flaw, bro, you can't have a conversation with those kind of people, bro. You know what I mean? Like, if we're going into a talk and like, you're just looking to misunderstand everything I say, then dude, why are we even talking? Kind of yeah. thing, you know? So, um, but yeah, dude, it just, it just, it was crazy to me how like, dude, literally the probably one, if not the most beloved American in the last 10 years. And like, he just said one thing, it was like, we're done with this fucking guy. But I'm like, bro, really? Are we? Because I'm not, you know what I mean? So yeah. That was just like wild to me. If anything, I, I I, mean, this is the first time I'm hearing what you just described uh, about him saying uh, this thing about defund the police. But if anything, I respect it more because, I mean, maybe people are thinking of it as now, like, oh, now that his boy's in the office, he's just saying shit. But I feel like um, that train of thought is kind of how I felt. But I know if I said that to like a hardcore liberal, they would immediately assume I'm like right wing or some shit. Like that's how crazy it's gotten. Yeah, Uncle Tom. (laughs) Yeah. Like if I don't literally damn near want to kill cops like for breakfast, then I'm like a whitey lover or some shit like that. And it's like it's not. That's not how it works. It literally isn't just black and white. Like you can still want police reform, but not like want to just straight up remove the police. Like there's ways we can go about this shit yeah that's what i think his point was leading towards like defund the police literally sounds like you're eradicating the police completely and he's like no dude like that that's that was only i think his only point like it just seems too the phrase facing too much animosity we can go about phrasing it in another way to get more people to listen to what we're trying to say because when you say that you're already losing half of america who has fucking a cop in the family you know what i mean yeah yeah, I think Americans are just simple-minded. It's like if if a politician wanted to, let's say he wanted to tweak some sort of like uh, ARs or assault rifles or whatever people want to call them, and then he put a hashtag behind it like "Unarm America" or some shit. Like yeah. people are just gonna hear that phrase and think that he wants to take away all guns, and you know they're gonna instill martial law and take over the fucking country when. It's just, it's all politics. It's all a game. People just say shit because it sounds cool and don't really investigate anything beyond that. And that just goes back to, I mean, America, excuse me, being the biggest marketing cesspool there is in the world, right? Like we just fall for any kind of marketing, right? So, Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, that's why defund the police just triggers so many emotions on, on both sides. So, yeah, it was just, I just wanted to bring it up, man, and ask the listeners what they, you know, put in the comments what you think on it. But, yeah, it's just, it's just crazy how, like, you could literally be the most beloved human, not black or white, human in America. And then you say the one thing and people are like, see, I told you, he doesn't even like black people. He's not even really black. He's from Hawaii. He's, you know, he's just like all this fucking... <laughs> yeah. It's so wild how that works, too, because the minute he does something great, then all of a sudden, you know, he's the blackest person on the planet. Black is, you know, his, his mother's in Nigeria right now. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. fucking... so, like, he's not one of us now. Like, his, his mom was out there fucking handing out lays in Honolulu yeah. the airport or something. Dude, yeah, it's uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, cancel culture is here to stay, unfortunately. Um all right, bro. So before we get into the music, though, man, I want to share a life update that fucking came from. We spoke about it offline a little bit. That I spoke to my my boy. He came over on Friday to chill and uh, relax. And I spoke to my therapist, my bro. A sober January, completely sober, bro. So no edibles, no nothing, bro. No alcohol, uh, dude. It's actually gonna be like a no nut January. Um, so no dating apps, no going on dates, none of that, no Pornhub, none of that shit, bro. Because I was, dude, my logic was, I feel like those things, although maybe not on the surface, take up a lot of my day to day. Like I feel like a lot of decisions are surround, are like around that. You know what I mean? Like, am I really trying to make this relationship work because I just want to get asked at the end of it, or do I genuinely, you know, love this person and want to make this work? Yeah. Uh, and then am I actually just stressed out? Or am I just, I want an excuse to take an edible and just relax for the night. So that kind of shit, you know what I mean? So I wanted to see what kind of levels of fucking clarity I get from just like removing those two vices completely out of the fucking picture, bro. So what are your thoughts on that starting off the year? 31 fucking days of just cleanness. Yeah. I mean, I support it. I've done it. I've tried to do it. I pretty much make it a ritual every year. Um, so I don't really like smoke or anything. So for me doing dry, like removing alcohol, um, is the bigger one for then you? it becomes like a sober, completely sober January yeah. anyways. Um, I always, I mean, for me, it's never been like a permanent thing. I don't, honestly, I don't know if like I'm strong enough for the rest of my life to like, oh, yeah, no, no, never I don't indulge. but I will say for that month, especially when people are doing the new year's resolutions for me, that's always like getting back into my workouts mm-hmm. and just like focusing on shit. I feel like it's always amazing. Um, and yeah, I don't, it's not like I get fucked up every other day with a bottle of tequila or something, but it does suck up time and you may be hung over and not want to work for the weekend. Like just a little shit like that. Um, I think it's definitely worth it. You save money as well. Um, and you also, I feel like just want to spend your time in a more productive way. Cause like, yeah, if that's you want to take an edible about. or drink, you may be like, all right, I'm going to watch Netflix for four hours. But if you're, if you're not, maybe that's not as exciting. You're like, fucking, I'm going to go for a uh, night jog or, yeah, I don't know, I'm going to like I'm gonna finally fucking start up this LLC or, you know, finally yeah. figure out how to invest in this property or, you know. Luckily for me, I mean, I think I'm going to have a distraction, quote unquote, because I'll be moving into the new house. So, like, I'll just figure out, you know, things for that. But, yeah, bro, it's just more so, yeah, like, dude, I honestly only drink on the weekends. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm not like, like I'm fucking pounding in a beer every night or some shit. Um, but, yeah, bro, like, I just feel like, I don't know, man, I just, like, I want to just make sure that I remind myself that I'm full of anything and everything I want to do. Um, whereas sometimes with alcohol and when girls are involved, you're like, dude, am I even doing this because I want to fucking do it? Or this is just to either, well, I'm going out with friends, so I have to drink. Or, well, I'm going to go on a date, so I have to, you know, make a move. Or I got to fucking keep talking to the person, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, just like the idea of like removing things that kind of, even if it's like 5%, can control how I want to do certain things in my life. I'm like, bro, let me just remove it just to prove to myself that I have complete control of whatever the yeah. fuck I'm I think that's a a good point too because when I did it a lot of times it was like to make sure that I'm not a fucking alcoholic or anything (laughs) even though deep down I was like I know I'm not but I I didn't I wanted to make sure I'm not in denial or like even if it's just because sometimes I'll just have cravings I'm like I'm bored I want a beer I'm not gonna get fucked up but I want a beer for a little buzz and just to kick back and relax but I wanted to make sure that 
it was more so like a habit if anything rather than like me being dependent on it yeah dude same like i was I, I didn't do shit this weekend besides going for dinner with my, my mom's new friend so i was here friday night and sunday night like all day i was like man i could just you know pop an edible just relax you know mellow out and it's like no bro like you're good like you don't need that shit you know so i'm slowly but surely trying to do it now like you know just to you know but then yeah january 1st at like 12 p.m because i'm sure i'm gonna be drinking you know midnight going in so january 1st around the afternoon i'm like all right sober sober january it is so yeah i'm excited bro. I'll definitely obviously update you and everybody on how that goes um dude i'm more concerned about the no nutting part like that's gonna be the part <laughs> that i'm just like damn bro because if like whoever's blessed first of february to like get that bro it's gonna be like scary movie where it's just like shh yep. gonna oh you're funny. gonna have a lot of uh fucking september children yo i yo, <laughs> i think so bro um but funny enough russ um the artist we like a lot he talks about like when he gets his horniest is where he doesn't do anything about it and tries to do something productive because like those like endorphins or whatever is like happening down there are forced to go do something else that you also want to be productive at. So I can see I'm that. hoping I, I'm hoping I have that happen to me for uh, for 31 days in January. Yeah, I don't know how I would articulate it, but I, I get what he's saying. I think it's like that, just like testosterone build up and yeah, just like you just have that uh, yeah that sort of energy that needs to go somewhere and instead of fucking clapping some cheeks you're like let yeah. me bang out this album or yeah, bang out this thing, let me get back LLC. in the studio yep and just put that energy somewhere else yeah exactly bro then imagine if like you're chasing ass like bro, that's what the uh, dude I'll give up a hinge update that's what's been a little bit terrifying on that fucking platform it's like do I even want to talk to you you know what I mean like there's been girls who like match with me I'm like all right cool like it's a nice little ego boost but I'm like bro I don't really want to talk like you know what I mean I don't want to do the whole back and forth so like but if I was in a mindset where I wanted to it's like damn bro like I'm just chasing 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 and it's like why am I even doing this you know what I mean so like yeah I just want to make sure that I got a taste of the, the dating sites but yeah like I want to get off that and just like really just focus on whatever the fuck comes in my mind in a productive way Nice. Yeah, that's dope. I support it. I'll probably yeah, do the man. same. I, yeah, dude. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Um, but yeah, I feel like, like you said, I remember you did it a couple times since we've been friends. Uh, my boy Sam was celibate before he even got married, and he uh, he's one of the most successful people I fucking know. So yeah, like, man, straight up, like his whole life? No. So when he met his now wife, uh, they agreed that before they get married, uh, they weren't going to partake in having sex. Okay. So like he already had from, sex from day before. one of meeting her. From day, once they decide it's going to be, uh, yeah. So they never, they never, uh, like oh, had, wow. had sex. Oh damn, he's he could produce a, a million classic albums right now. Classics, bro. Classics. <laughs> <laughs> he's the next Nas, and he doesn't even know it. Dude, classic, bro. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so he's actually the one who I was talking about this Friday. And he was like, bro, do that shit, bro. Like fucking, like yo, like you'll you'll see, like it's be fucking, like I. I like the first like 10 days of like really like just, like feeding for it you're gonna be like bro this is great mind's clear so i was like bro but if you did it i was like bro let's let's fucking try but, but i always fuck around with it. i'm like bro like damn bro you didn't like what if it's trash like what if the sex is absolutely <laughs> trash <laughs> he's like nah it worked out bro i'm like thank god bro because otherwise that'd be like a year and a half build up for what but yeah, yeah it worked out yeah i feel nice like... all right bro so let's get into the fucking music did you get a chance to peep um, anything that dropped this past week? Uh, the Amine Deluxe dropped. Um, what else dropped this last week? Yeah, I heard some of that Amine. Uh, forget the song name. Mr. Clean? Yeah, it's the first song on the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one's dope. It, it wasn't like anything super mind-blowing, but it, it def- I could see... It did feel like a track he omitted from the original release. Correct. And I can see how Which is what I perfect. appreciate the most because it's like, it feels like, yeah, it would have been a part of this album. Yeah, like a real deluxe. Yeah. Anything else that stood out to you that you're fucking excited for or you were excited to listen to a couple times? Um, Honestly, not much. I felt like for me, it was a pretty dead week. Like, I didn't, I don't know if it's because it's the end of the year. People are going to have some Christmas surprises or something, but... Mm-hmm. 
I feel like the past couple of weeks have been kind of dry in terms of releases. True, true. Which should change though, because we have Jack Harlow dropping on Friday, yeah. and we have Kid Cudi announcing today he's dropping Man on the Moon three also on Friday. So dude, like, oh wow. <sighs> yeah, so That's talk about dude. I'm gonna get high out of my fucking mind Friday night. This <laughs> is that shit. Nice. Yeah, I'll, I don't know what I'll be doing or where I'll be, but it'll Dude, definitely imagine be a you're vibe. in Hawaii overlooking some crazy sunset and just blasting Man on the Moon. Bro, that's going to be a vibe. Yeah, I'll find be a hookah, alpha. Find a hookah and just make that. I know. I got. Oh, now that I realize it, they since they require that we get tested before going, I feel like they should be pretty open. So it's not a bad idea. Fuck it. I'm going to do it. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I hope so, bro. Yeah, because I mean, they required it in Puerto Rico, but I mean, they had curfew in Puerto Rico. But, dude, the thing about Hawaii that you should probably look into, bro, like, um, it's that there's not that many hospitals, bro. So, like, I think they also may be pretty aggressive with, like, things being closed only because they can't handle that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and especially, like, if you're in the main lo- island, but you're in an off island, but you need to come to the main island to get fucking health care. It's like, you're, you're fucked. Yeah, so, that's a good point. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, a lot of shit's, like, actually closed. But, obviously, you, I mean, just do some research on it because I... I went on a couple websites and I was able to find out exactly what is and isn't open in uh, Puerto Rico. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so back to the music. Jack Harlow, excited for that one. Um, I guess his chance to really prove that that first couple songs was just a, you know just in a fluke. Yeah. Um, and I saw his post and I, I really liked it because he he's basically telling everyone it may seem like some overnight shit to most people, but I'll, like for instance, I and I don't consider myself a day one fan because i don't even know how far his catalog goes back but my friend but you showed, before a lot of people though yeah yeah i would say i was definitely before a lot of people um i think my friend showed me his song that he had with sci high which came out i want to say at least three years ago um and i was always like this dude's dope I mean, obviously when i first saw his picture i was like is he white or is he like light-skinned hispanic like i couldn't tell but I was just this album cover. It's so confusing. I'm like, mm-hmm. is this like a and yeah, like super man? curly hair. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this dude, like, I I got his like sense of humor in the bars and stuff, but I was like, I don't know if he he has like a hit or anything that's gonna propel him. And then as soon as was yeah, popping cool. came out, I was Let's like, all right, <laughs> like, this fool's going nowhere. And then I mean, bro, that song was listened to like times in a row. Yeah. I, I didn't realize I listened to it that many times. It was my number one song this year. Um, but my concern was that that was going to overshadow everything. People going to be like, oh, he's the white kid who did What's Poppin'. Like, he doesn't really have anything else. So I'm hoping this album lives up to everything because I really did. Uh, I really do like his music, like, genuinely. And um, I'm hoping he's not, like, yeah. influenced by the mainstream and creating like cookie cutter shit yeah yeah thing. i agree dude what I, what I think he needs though bro because like, i could be completely fucking wrong because i was wrong with the, but uh travis scott and franchise but i feel like the tyler hero song isn't like it's good but it's not really like you know like a hit hit so yeah. I want, he just needs like this album to have at least like two or three bangers that fucking really just like stand the fuck out I think so. I mean, I'll admit Tyler Hurl, like, if it comes on, I'll, uh, bob to it, but it's not, for me personally, it's not, like, something I want to replay that yeah. much. It's, like, it kind of sounds like a baby beat. It's nothing super intriguing to me. Like, I'm not even that big of a fan of Tyler. Is it Hurl? Hero, yeah. Hero? I'm not, like, a huge fan of him to begin with, so it doesn't really have that impact. Like, oh, shit, he's yeah. rapping about him. Like, Iverson yeah. Post Malone or some shit um, so yeah I think honestly he does need uh, either it has to be like something that will impress the lyricist or he has to have bangers I don't see him doing well if it's if it's like kind of in between just like yeah new school beats and you know generic flow and stuff I mean yeah and dude technically man like that album of his did drop like almost a year ago though, right so really he's had, he's had a year to really work on this album so mm-hmm. I mean yeah you would think he would come with something that's super fucking well prepared I guess he's heard all the criticism so he knows where his fans lie and don't lie with him so I'm excited for that but obviously that's gonna be a Saturday fucking mix that I listen to dude I'm telling you Friday 
only Kid Cudi, nonstop Kid Cudi. I made you like, what is it, uh, Wednesday and Thursday listen to like Man on the Moon 1 and 2, and then on Friday just fucking do like the whole yeah. Man on the Moon 3. Yeah, it's going to be a long, long, long weekend of music. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Um, all right, bro, anything else um, you're looking forward to or you want to get into some Heat of the Week? Uh, let's do it. Let's get into Heat of the Week. Let's get it. You go first, bro. Um... So this one actually wasn't, it's not a new song, but I came up, so when you sent me that uh, 6 9 video of him in the club throwing dollars at that one dude, I heard the song in the background, I was like, that shit sounds like Pop Smoke. And it was the song Element off of uh, Meet the Woo 2. Yeah. Like, I'm obsessed with that song. I don't know if it's the beat or the flow or what, but that song just does something whenever i play it in the car i'm obsessed nice. with it so I, i've literally li been listening to that non-stop to the to the point where my girl even knows who pop smoke is now so. <laughs> finally yeah After you died and went number yeah. one it's like awesome you finally yeah. caught up yeah it was one of those moments where i was like fuck he's dead like this guy yeah, dude. That's something. A, not the funny thing but that's like the sad thing about like I think we take it for granted like in this world where we're like you know we have so much content like we just kind of move on to the next thing but like bro like juice world and pop and dude when i forwarded you those numbers where xx still fucking had almost like what three billion streams this year it's like damn bro like we really aren't gonna get more content from these people and like that's the sad thing right it just you know you just chuck it up to them like yeah you know they died it happened it's like no bro like this is sad on so many fucking levels like they're not with their family anymore they can't provide for their you know neighborhoods and like yo us as listeners aren't gonna have classic music to you know refer to in the future like obviously like my number one artist was uh mac miller i was like damn bro i'm not gonna get any more fucking mac albums like that fucking sucks uh, yeah. on a selfish personal level obviously his family's devastated they don't have a son or a nephew or a cousin anymore but as a listener i feel like we take for granted that we aren't gonna have some fucking phenomenal artist still giving us music for years to come yeah which is why yeah, I should probably appreciate those artists that we do have now way mm -hmm. more as opposed to just waiting for the next album, the next album. It's like, bro, you should really enjoy this right now. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, it's kind of like human nature. We just assume everything is going to be as is. Maybe, I don't know if that's some sort of defense mechanism where if at any given moment you think something right before your eyes is going to disappear that you're not going to uh, enjoy it because you're going to be harping on the fact that it's not forever. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to do a better job of like when I hear artists kind of giving them their roses while they're still here in some way or another. Uh, I think Mac Miller, I think we definitely appreciated his music well before he was gone. It's just yeah. now it sucks even more because we're like, we know what we would be missing out on selfishly yeah. from like a music standpoint. 100%. Especially because we saw on that trajectory like those last three albums were just like dude this is a different level of artistry we're getting right now whereas you like yeah this is not just like another like you know fun album he's putting out so yeah, yeah. so um all right element meet the woo 2 always a classic dude so for me i have a couple so yeah i, I mean dude for me the limbo deluxe by amine was just great bro like again nothing that stood out that was like oh my god this is a fucking banger so really like my heat of the week is just go check out the whole deluxe album now with the extra i think seven songs uh mr clean's fire or miss clean is fire um buzzin is a fucking great like love track and then solid is also like literally solid no pun intended so go check that out because dude i listened to the whole album during my workout during lunch today and bro when it got to mama i i swear on everything i love i started crying at the gym you know what i mean so like you're just like fucking like wow this is fucking like good fucking music which yeah. again the album came out in fucking june how much has happened since june you forget to go back and listen to it um so yeah with the extra tracks i like that in fucking just all right let me move on to the next thing i listen to the whole thing and like yeah so definitely just give amine his roses while he's here because i think we've mentioned already on this but like limbo was a a massive fucking leap from the other album he put out before so this is pretty impressed for an artist just to have that mastery of what they're doing at I think he's 26, 27 something. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love artists like him who can do a kind of like silly track or whatever, like Miss Clean. Or is it Mr. Clean mm -hmm. or Miss Clean? 
It's Miss Clean. Miss Clean, and then do a track like Mama or, or whatever else that's more heartfelt and serious. I feel like that's, if they can tap into different emotions, then in my opinion, that's requires more talent because it's hard to do that. Well, so I don't know more, but I don't know about more talent, but like, it's also like, that's, you appreciate that they're, they're touching all, except the human emotion. Like, dude, we're not all the same all the time. Right. Yeah. Which again, I give credits. Like, that's why I think pop smoke album was dope because yeah, it's gang shit, but he's also talking about like, I just want to get a fucking hot ass girl right now who has a fucking short hair, tan, and a tattoo. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, yeah it's just, it's not the same shit over and over. Um, so yeah, Mine for me, um, listen to the fucking deluxe version of Limbo, phenomenal. Um, it was cool that he was nominated for a couple Grammys too, which is fucking dope. Um, I don't hear anyone complaining about that, which is a good thing. Um, and then bro, you bro, like you're fucking, you sent me the song last week. Um, so I definitely, definitely enjoyed that. So when are you going to put it on uh, the platform so we can put it on the uh, different playlists? Yeah. So, um, I basically, I hit up a dude on Fiverr to create not a music video, but like an animated still. Um, okay. Cause I didn't want to just upload, like, I didn't even know what I was going to upload for the image. So I, I was like, let me do something cool and different for my quote unquote return. Um, so I hit up a dude on Fiverr who makes like animated stills to make it a little okay. more exciting. So that should be delivered within a day or two. Um, so once that is complete, then I'm going to essentially add the song to once I have that imagery, then I can add it to like the, all the streaming services. Mm -hmm. And I think it takes like a week or something tops uh, to be on the streaming services and then i'm gonna make like a more formal announcement nice. um, and then moving forward i'll just for fun try to make a track like every few weeks uh at least um because it was always something i enjoyed doing i just never did because because of work and i was like society so, yeah society i'm like i outgrew this shit like why do it but now I'm, as i sit at home all the time i'm like i should just do things i enjoy um I don't have to be this suit and tie. Yeah, dude, you don't have kids right now. You don't yeah. have the, yeah, like, why? You have the time. Like, there'll mm -hmm. be a time soon where you don't have the time anymore. We don't have the time anymore. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, yeah, let me just do it. And if people want to judge it, they can. Personally, I, I think uh, over time, I've um, learned enough with, like, the audio to make it, like, more presentable. Like, back in college, when I listened, some of the shit I can't even listen to because I'm like, I can hear the amateur, <laughs> the amateur vibes from it. And that, I'm not trying to say I'm no fucking professional at this point, but it's uh, de streaming service worthy, I guess, is a good yeah. a way to phrase it. So I'm excited to see what other stuff I come up with and kind of merge that. And maybe we can sell like audio theory merch through it, or I can put that imagery in some of the shit. Um, just make it like a full circle yeah. thing. Some Jaden Smith shit. I don't know. I'm just trying to get really creative because I, I think that's the blessing I've seen over the past, or with this these new kids is like, um, they just do a lot of weird like creative shit that's fits them, and I feel like it resonates with somebody. Um, yeah, it resonates with someone who just you can tell they're not trying to fit into some like society norm. It's like no, yeah. you're you're 21 you should be like this as a hip-hop artist like god forbid it's like bro shut the fuck up like no one yeah. but it's, i feel like it's i think hopefully you find that same like level of clarity where it's like you know you don't have to do this shit so it's like why not do it exactly how you want to do it you know? yeah yeah and i Whereas, think like a lot of those guys who like come through the soundcloud thing they feel like i have to get a face tattoo i gotta have you know and it's like no you don't like, yeah. but again they probably don't have anything else to fall back on so like yeah yeah that's true um I think that's kind of a blessing of getting older too is I know, you know, once we're 50, 60 or whatever, and we look back, you know, we're going to think, you know, why do we care so much? Why did we worry about what this person thought, this person thought, you know, I'd say definitely in my twenties in college, especially I was super, I was always comparing myself to, you know, these, this rapper and this rapper, and I have to dress this way and talk this way. And then once I hit 30, I was like, oh shit, like this rapper's completely himself and he's thriving and this rapper he's completely him himself and he's thriving they're co two completely different people just doing what comes to them naturally so yeah dude 
Yeah. And I didn't even music, bro. I feel like I did that in my 20s just to fucking every human being. Like, just compare myself to them. You know what I mean? And that shit, like, sets you back because you're, like, just... You're afraid to take those first steps because it's like, well, I don't want that person who I actually respect to judge me, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I think there's a level of clarity that comes when you're like, thankfully successful in other things in your life that like, if it fucking sucks, it sucks. Who cares? Like, at least I fucking did it, you know? So yeah, which is obviously what we're trying to do with uh, audio theory anyway. So yeah, definitely uh, can't wait for that to be on uh, every platform so we can obviously put it on the playlist and have everyone fucking go support that. Yes, sir. All right, Broski, so uh, let the people know where they can find us, and then we're out of here. Yep, you can find us on YouTube. We got the Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts uh, set up, so you can find us there. But we also have playlists as well, so definitely look out for Heat of the Week. But all of the links are in the description. Um, If you're listening on the podcast, head over to audio-theory.com. Check us out. Boom. Be safe, my dude. Enjoy Hawaii. Love you. Likewise.